It's a myth that serial killers are antisocial loners and incapable of maintaining relationships. Dennis Rader did a fantastic job proving that. Let's dive deep into the life of this serial killer who led an almost perfect double life as a serial killer and a devoted, loving father. Rader, one of four sons born to Dorothea May Rader and William Elvin Rader, was born on March 9, 1945. According to various sources, Rader was born either in Columbus, Kansas or Pittsburgh, Kansas. He was raised in Wichita. Both parents worked long hours and paid little attention to their children at home. Rader later described feeling ignored and resentful of his mother in particular. Rader had deranged sexual fantasies concerning tormenting trapped and helpless women ever since he was a child. He also practiced zoo sadism, tormenting, massacring, and literally hanging small animals. Rader acted out his sexual fetishes for autoerotic asphyxiation, voyeurism, and cross-dressing. He frequently spied on his female neighbors while dressed in women's clothing, including stolen women's underwear, and he masturbated while having ropes binding his neck and arms. Dennis Rader was a loving husband and father, as well as the president of his church congregation. To everyone who knew him, he appeared to be trustworthy and responsible. However, he was living a double life. Even Rader's wife, Paula Dietz, was unaware that he had been living a double life as the Park City, Kansas serial murderer, better known as the BTK killer, a man who tortured and murdered 10 people within and around Wichita, Kansas from 1974 to 1991. When the BTK killer, abbreviated for Bind, Torture, Kill, was apprehended in 2005, Dennis Rader's wife and daughter Carrie refused to accept it. My father was the one who taught me my morals, his daughter later recalled. He taught me right from wrong. She had no idea that her father had preyed on girls just like herself for over 30 years. Rader later described how he would use a rope to bind his arms and ankles and also wrap his head with a bag, which he'd later use on his victims. He cut out photos of arousing women from magazines and started drawing gags and ropes on them. He fantasized about how he could restrict and control them. However, Rader maintained an ordinary outer appearance and went to college for just a short time before dropping out and joining the U.S. Air Force. He later took a job as an electrician in Wichita after returning home from duty. He later met his wife, Paula, at church, where he proposed to her after only a few months of working for a convenience store. Rader was fired from his job as an electrician in 1973, and he murdered the first of his victims on the 15th of January, 1974. Dennis Rader broke into the Otero family home and murdered everyone inside while his wife Paula was sleeping. The children of the family, Josie, 11, and Joseph, 9, were compelled to watch as Dennis choked their parents to death. Mommy, I love you, cried Josie as she witnessed Raider choke her mom to death. She was then dragged down into the basement where Raider stripped her of her underwear and hanged her from a sewer system. Josie's final words were a question about what would happen to her. Well, honey, her killer, stoic and calm, said, you're going to be in heaven tonight with the rest of your family. He decided to watch the girl choking to death while masturbating. He photographed the dead bodies and collected a few of the young girl's underwear as a souvenir of his first murder. While her husband was out slaughtering a family, Dennis's wife, Paula, was planning her own. Raider's next two victims were killed just months after the Otero's 15-year-old son found his family. Rader stalked and sat waiting in the apartment of Catherine Bright, a young college student, before stabbing and strangling her. Her brother was then shot twice, but he survived, after which he described Rader as having psychotic eyes. 
Paula was three months pregnant with Raider's first child when her husband began to covertly advertise his crimes. He called the Wichita Eagle and told them where they could find his confession after explaining how he intentionally killed the Oteros in a handwritten note that he stuffed inside an engineering book at the Wichita Public Library. He went on to say that he planned to kill again and called himself BTK, an abbreviation for his chosen method, bind, torture, and kill. Dennis Rader allegedly paused his murder spree after Paula Dietz informed him that she was pregnant, saying, I was so excited for us and our folks. They had become a family and he had a great job as well as a baby on the way. However, this happiness only lasted a few years before the BTK murderer struck once more in 1977. Dietz discovered an early draft of a poem titled Shirley Locks, wherein her husband writes, Thou shalt not scream, but sit on the cushion and think about me and death. Even when the hints added up, Paula didn't ask questions. She remained silent as her husband scribbled his own hidden message on newspaper articles about the serial killer. Even when she realized that the taunting messages that the BTK killer sent to the police contained the same horrifying spelling errors as the letters she received from her husband, she remarked, You spell just like BTK. She also didn't question her husband about the strange sealed box that he stored in their home. She never once attempted to look inside. Had she looked, she would have discovered the mother load, which was Raider's treasure chest of horrors. It enclosed mementos from the BTK killer's crime scenes, such as dead woman's underwear and driver's licenses, as well as photographs of him dressing up in his victim's underwear, strangling himself as well as burying himself alive, reenacting how he had murdered his victims. Dennis Rader's own children had no reason to suspect him. At his worst, their father was a strict moral Christian. Carrie Rawson, Rader's daughter, recalled how her father once grabbed her brother by the neck and she and her mom had to hold him off to save the boy's life. Every morning on his way to church, her father waved to Marine Hedge, 53. Dennis Rader was the one who consoled and reassured his family after she became the BTK killer's eighth victim, bound and choked to death. Don't worry, he said, we're fine. Raider had actually killed the woman the night before, after slipping out of the campsite where he was chaperoning his son's Cub Scout retreat. He returned to the young group of boys the next morning, unconcerned. In 1986, he murdered his ninth victim, Vicki Weggerly, 28, while her two-year-old son watched from a playpen. Her assassination would go unsolved until the BTK killer unwittingly managed to bring himself to justice. Dennis Rader happened to come across a story in the local paper commemorating the Otero murders in his final year as a free man. He wanted to reintroduce the BTK killer and sent almost a dozen gloating packages and letters to the police and media in 2004. But, it was a message on a floppy disk that would finally do him in. The police discovered the metadata of a removed Microsoft Word document inside. Dennis Rader, the president of the church council, wrote the document for Christ Lutheran Church. To confirm a match, DNA samples were collected from one of his victim's fingernails, and police examined his daughter's pap smears. On February 25th, 2005, Raider was captured from his household in front of his family after they received a positive match. He tried to remain a reassuring expression and gave his daughter a final hug, promising her that everything would be fine soon. However, he didn't try to hide anything in the police vehicle. When the officer asked if he knew the reason he was being apprehended, Raider replied with a cold smirk, Oh, I have suspicions why. Raider then publicly admitted to all 10 murders, appearing to take twisted pleasure in describing the horrific killings in court. The BTK killer was sentenced to 175 years in prison with no chance of parole. 
Raider only escaped the death penalty because Kansas did not have it in place during his 17-year rampage. Dennis Raider was 60 years old when he was sentenced to 10 consecutive life terms in prison. Following through with the story of Dennis Raider, what do you think was his motive for the murders? Are you among those who believe that his wife had no idea what he was up to? We would love to know. Share your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.